this is part 38 and in this part we will continue our discussion as far as the right of private defense is concerned in the last part we dealt with the right of private defense of the body and in this part we shall be dealing with the provisions as far as the right of private defense of the property is concerned but the headings are the same that is as we dealt with the right of private defense of the body where we learn what is this right when the right commences how long the right continues when the right ends what when it extends to the causing of death and what are the restrictions or limitations with respect to this right with which we will continue our discussion and then in order to understand the right of private defense of the property the property may be movable or immovable. In case of movable property, as we have dealt with the various offenses that we have learned, that there can be deprivation of your property. Yes, correct. And nobody should deprive you of your property. And if there is danger to your property, that somebody with which you have been, when it commences, with which we shall be dealing as far as section 105 is concerned, but then you have got a right. In case of immovable property, you have got quiet time I mean, what is your right? You can have quiet and peaceful enjoyment of the property. If somebody enters your property with intent to what? That you should be deprived of this right of quiet and peaceful enjoyment of the property. You have got every right. You can proceed against him in a court of law, no doubt about it. But till that time, I mean, if somebody enters immediately, the re immediate action on your part can be to throw him out so that your property, immovable property is intact, namely intact in the sense he won't take away the property, it's very correct, but he will, I mean, you can have quiet and peaceful enjoyment of the property. So this is with respect to movable as well as immovable property. Now what it says, as I mean, section 96 says, that nothing is an offense which is done in the exercise of the right of private defense. So whatever is done by an individual, as far as the right of private, if it falls under what is known as right of private defense, and then what is that with which we shall be dealing, it will not amount to an offense. To the matter, if he has at the time of defending his property, or at the time of, I mean, somebody enters the land, or they enters the house, and he has thrown him out, which has resulted into bodily pain, and if the matter goes to the court of law, what he can say, your honor, if at all you, I am accused for the offense of voluntarily causing hurt or voluntarily causing grievous hurt or maybe under certain circumstances when my act has resulted into death of the person, I am not liable because section 96 is an exception which says nothing is an offense which is done in the exercise of the right of private defense. So that is one part. Secondly, in case of property said, every person has a right subject to restrictions contained in section 99. Two, defend the property whether movable or immovable of himself or of any other person against any act which is an offense falling under the definition of theft robbery mischief or criminal trespass or which is an attempt to commit theft robbery mischief or criminal trespass so when we are talking about right of private defense this right of private defense can be with respect to movable as well as immovable property and against what? Against any act which is an offense. So this right can be exercised only against an act which is an offense. An offense of what? Falling under the definition of theft, robbery, mischief or criminal trespass or which is an attempt to commit theft, robbery, mischief or criminal trespass. Again, this is a time for me to make it very clear to you that unless you have dealt right from section 378 up to section 462 the chapter with which you have dealt in the past and uh, the chapter relates to what offenses against property it may not be possible because i mean the right is with respect to theft it is against i mean theft robbery mischief or criminal trespass but I mean, it doesn't speak about, I mean, dishonest misappropriation or a criminal breach of trust or, for example, cheating. Why? 
Because I mean, when we will deal with section 105, then you will come to know that well, there is in case in case of dishonest misappropriation, you have already parted with the property. The person has got I mean possession of the property, which is which may be what is known as casual or innocent possession, who may be finder of the goods, who might have got property because of the mistake of fact, or who might have I mean his intention was not dishonest at the time when he had a property. And if you correlate this with section 105, with which the sec <coughs> section starts as far as the commencement continues and when the right ends is concerned, he said the right of private defense of property commences when a reasonable apprehension of danger to the property commences. In the case of, I mean, uh, dishonest misappropriation, in case of criminal breach of trust, there is no, uh, no reasonable apprehension of danger to the property. In case of, I mean, criminal breach of trust, if you remember, if I give a book to somebody and tell him give it to my relative and if he doesn't, at the time when the book is given to him, he is entrusted with the property and the duty is cast that it should be given to my relative. So there is no danger to the property. And what the section clearly says, the right of private defense of the property commences when a reasonable apprehension of danger to the property commences. And hence, not like in case of offenses affecting human body. And if you compare this with the first part with which you are dead, and that is every person has got right subject to the restrictions contained in section 99 to defend his own body and the body of any other person against any offense affecting offense affecting the human body. But here it speaks about what it tells you when there is a right of private defense of the property commences as soon as reasonable apprehension of danger to the body commences and hence by this is now it can be with respect to what when uh, the, you can exercise the right of private defense. You have got right to defend uh, defend the property, whether movable or immovable, of himself or of any other person, falling under the definition of theft, robbery, mischief, or criminal trespass, or which is an attempt to commit theft, robbery, mischief, or criminal trespass, because of section 105, that it says that well, in this case only there is a danger there is a danger to the property and hence the right of private defense of property commences when a reasonable apprehension of danger to the property commences so this is i mean as far as section 97 is concerned and then as we had dealt i mean i mean just a passing reference in order to complete but then what happens when a child whose age is four tries to take away your book his act will not amount to an offense because he is protected as per section 82 is concerned. If somebody who is a person of unsound mind, he is trying to take away your book. His act may not amount to an offense provided he is, I will take it for granted for the sake of argument for the time being that he is protected as per section 84 of the Indian Penal Code is concerned which deals with insanity as a defense or section 85 somebody who is intoxicated is trying to take away the property or somebody thinks he is under misconception that he is taking his property but actually in fact he tries to he tries to take your book under those circumstances the act of the child act of the person of unsound mind act of the person who is intoxicated or the act of the person when it is done under misconception of fact will not amount to an offense but then as far as section 98 is concerned with which we had discussion in the past it says when an act which otherwise be a certain offense is not an offense by reason of youth the want of maturity of understanding the unsoundness of mind or the intoxication of the person doing that act or by reason of any misconception on the part of the person Every person has the same right of private defense against that act which he would have if the act were that offense. So section 98 is a specific generally we talk about when we talk about right of private defense of the body or the property we have learned that there can be right of private defense of every person has got right to defend his body and the body of any other person against any offense affecting human body or the property whether movable or immovable of himself or any other other person against any act which is an offense falling under the definition of theft, robbery, mischief or criminal trespass or which is an attempt to commit theft, robbery, mischief or criminal trespass. 
But in this, uh, the illustrations that I have given you, the situation is such where the act which is done on the part of an individual may not amount to an offense, but you have got a right. And this is exactly what is the right of private defense, as far as sec the right of private defense of the property is concerned, as far as section 96, section 97 and section 98 of the Indian Penal Code is concerned. With this now, this is the first state. What is this right? Whatever is done by the person for the purpose of defending his property or the property i need not give you explanation again you have got right to defend your property and the property of any other person any other person means other than yourself yes that is i mean you can defend the property of the stranger also and hence now you have got right to defend your property and the property of any other person and now this is exactly whatever is done for the purpose of defending your property or the property of any other person. If your act results into cause, causing of bodily pain to him, then in that case, I mean, if the matter goes to the court of law, by all means, you can say, yes, my act has resulted into bodily pain to him. But I am not liable for the offence of voluntarily causing hurt because my case falls under section 96 of the Indian Penal Code which says nothing is an offence which is done in the exercise of the right of private defence. In other words, section 96 is an exception to that section which defines an act which amounts to an offence. With this now, we proceed to the next part. And what is the next part? We try to understand when this right of private defense of the body, sorry, property commences, how long it continues and when it ends. As section 105, which starts with the wording, the right of private defense of property commences when a reasonable apprehension of danger to the property commences. So the right of private defense of the property, it is linked up with the danger to the property. And it says the right of private defense of the property commences when a reasonable apprehension of danger to the property commences. Yes, this is the first part. So whenever there is danger to the property, danger to the property commences. I mean, the right of private defense of the property commences. So it is linked up with the danger to the property. When the property was in danger or there was danger to the property, the right commences. And then now... The further part, I mean section, as uh, compared to section 102, this is a lengthy section because it deals with each offense and it says the right of private defense of property against theft because you have got right to defend your body, your property and the property of any other person against any offense falling under the definition of theft, robbery, mischief or criminal trespass. And it says the right of private defense of property against theft continues till the offender has effected his retreat with the property or either the assistance of the public authorities is obtained or the property has been recovered. In a case where somebody came to your place as somebody came to me and he picked up the book in front of me and he starts taking away the book. And then I have taken objection. I say, don't take it away. And he says, I am sorry. He, he, I mean, I, I, I wanted to commit the offense of theft, but no, I will keep it back again. And he keeps back again. Now, can I say why you have touched my book and I start beating him? No, because I have got, I mean, the proper, the pro or I use a force and record the property. The property has been recorded. Or in case of a pickpocketer, when he is caught holder and handed over to the police, when the assistance of the public authorities has been, uh, assistance of the public authorities is obtained. So once I mean you uh, hand over hand over him to the police, and now I mean it is responsibility of the police department to do everything for the purpose of collection of evidence in order to prove the guilt of the accused person beyond reasonable doubt in a court of law. Yes, very correct. Or it says the right of private defense of property against theft continues till the offender has effected his retreat with the property. In a case where you come to know in the morning that during night hours somebody has taken away your property or committed theft with respect to your property. Now can you I mean go to his place and try to take away property by using a force? The answer is in the negative. And once he takes away, because it is to be linked up with what? The right of private defense of the property commences when a reasonable apprehension of danger to the property commences. And here, as the property is already taken away, once he has taken away the property, there is no danger to the property. Yes, you must get back the property. 
that can be labeled as what is known as stolen property and you are entitled to get back the property no doubt about it but then mind well i mean in this is a case where as i mean he has already i mean there is no danger to the property and hence the uh, in case of theft it says the right of private defense of property uh, against theft continues till the offender has effected his retreat with the property or assistance of the public authorities is obtained or the property has been recovered as far as the theft is concerned so this is to be first of all this is the time for you to refresh as i told you offense of theft then you can understand in case of theft when the right continue when the right commences when it continues and when it ends and then when it commences to be read with what when is somebody is going to commit an offense falling under the definition of theft or attempt to commit theft so when there is on the part somebody has committed theft and trying to take away the property or some uh, on whose part there is an attempt to take away the property you have got right of private defense because this is required to be read with section 97 now the next part says the right of private defense of property against robbery continues as long as the offender causes or attempts to cause to any person death hurt or wrongful state or as long as fear of instant death or of instant hurt or of instant wrongful state continues now to understand this when in case of robbery how long the right continues when the right ends now here this is a time for you to i mean understand section 3 refresh your memory regarding section 390 and if you i mean if you go through section 3 refresh your memory regarding 390 what we have learned in all robbery there is either theft or extortion that we have learned and then the next part i mean the i i had told you if you remember classify this section 390 under three different heads one first of all it says in all robbery there is either theft or extortion so what is robbery robbery is an aggravated form of either theft or extortion and then what is i mean when theft is robbery because robbery is an aggravated form and it says when theft is robbery it says theft is robbery if in order to the committing of the theft in committing the theft or in carrying away property obtained by obtained by theft the offender for that end voluntarily causes or attempts to cause death hurt or wrongful strain or fear of instant death instant hurt or instant wrongful strain so as long as there is what there is a reasonable apprehension of danger to the property the right commences a right i mean here the right will continue the right of private defense of property against robbery continues as long as the offender causes if he causes or attempts to cause to any person death hurt or wrongful strain or fear of instant death instant hurt or instant wrongful strain so in case of extortion when extortion is robbery it says extortion is robbery if the offender at the time of committing the extortion is in the presence of the per person put in fear and commits extortion by putting that person in fear of instant death instant hurt or instant wrongful strain to that person or to any other person and by so putting in fear induces the person so put in fear then and there to deliver up the thing extorted so this is what is known so as long as as long as offender causes at long the offender causes he continues to cause or attempts to cause to any person death hurt or wrongful strain or as long as there is a fear of instant death instant hurt or instant wrongful strain the uh, uh, the right the right continues so once this ends the right automatically ends so once you understand when it continues when it doesn't continue that it comes to an end automatically as far as section 105 is concerned next it says the right of private defense of property the right of private defense of property against criminal trespass now the right of private defense of property against criminal trespass or mischief continues so when it continues as far as the criminal trespass or mischief is concerned as long as the offender continues in the commission of criminal trespass or mischief so as long as the offender continues in the commission of criminal trespass and what is criminal trespass as long as who are enters into or upon the property which is in possession of some other person with intent to commit an offence with intent to intimidate insult or annoy as long as he is in the on the property the criminal trespass continues or in case of mischief 
as long as I mean he mischief as I mean you remember defined by section 425. So as long as he continues in the commission of criminal trespass or mischief, once I mean he has left the place, there is no question of exercising the right. If somebody takes away your book, he takes your book or sets fire to your book in your presence and throws away the book. Now there is, I mean, he is liable for the offense of mischief, but he, as long as he continues, he is not continuous. He al already completed the offense. He has already committed the offense of mischief. He has already destroyed the property. And there, if you remember, what is mischief? Whoever with intent to cause or knowing that he is likely to cause wrongful loss or damage to the public or to any person causes destruction of the property or change in the property or in the situation thereof, which diminishes its value or affects it injuriously, commits mischief as defined by section 425. So somebody wanted to set fire. He, if he continues to setting for as far as setting of the fire is concerned, you have got right. But once he sets fire to your building or sets fire to your standing crop and runs away, you can proceed against him for the offense. But there is no right because now then in the question of danger, you can think of a danger to the property when somebody is going to do an act otherwise not. So the right of private defense of property against criminal trespass or mischief continues as long as the offender continues in the commission of criminal trespass or mischief. Now the last part says the right of private defense of property against housebreaking by night. In case of housebreaking by night, how long the right continues? It says as long as the house, house trespass which has been begun by such housebreaking continues. As long as the house trespass which has been begun by such housebreaking continues. So once he leaves the house or he is thrown out of the house, that is the end of it. The which was begun, that is the end of it. And hence, in case of housebreaking by in case of housebreaking by night, the right of private defense of property against housebreaking by night continues as long as the house trespass which has been begun. Because what is housebreaking by night? Housebreaking by night is an aggravated form of housebreaking. What is housebreaking? Housebreaking is an aggravated form of house trespass with which you are dead. So entry or departure if it is by any one of the six ways and hence this is exactly what I want to point out. That unless I mean once somebody says what is housebreaking by night, it must immediately click you. If somebody commits the offense of housebreaking after sunset before sunrise, that amounts to the offense of housebreaking by night. And if the entry or departure, if it is by one of the six ways that are enumerated as far as section, section 446 is concerned, that will amount to the house breaking as it is dead. So now this is, as I mean, you have, uh, you read section, you read section 97, to be read with section 105, you come to know that what is this right and then you also come to know that when the right commences, how long the right continues and when the right ends as far as section 105 of the Indian Penal Code is concerned. With this we start with the next part and what is the next part as we had done when this right of private defense of the property extends to the causing of death and then if you start reading section 103 it says the right of private defense of property extends under the restrictions mentioned in section 99 to the voluntary causing of death or of any other harm to the offender if the offense the committing of which or the attempt to commit which occasions the exercise of right be an offense of any of the descriptions hereinafter enumerated namely so when you have got when the right of private defense of property extends to the causing of death it extends to the causing of death in case of robbery as defined by section 390 so in case when there is attempt when there is attempt on the part of some person so as i mean you read when you have got a right against any act falling under the definition of theft robbery so if act amounts to an offense of robbery or when there is attempt to commit robbery, robbery, mischief or criminal trespass or which is an attempt to commit uh, theft, robbery, mischief or criminal trespass. So in that case, in case of robbery, now I did not tell you when the right commences, how long it continues, when it did. In case of robbery, in case of robbery, so when there is a danger to the property by committing the offense of robbery, the right extends to the causing of death because section 105 says the right of private defense of the property commences when uh, reasonable apprehension of danger to the property commences. 
and hence now this is the time in case of robbery the right of private defense of the property extends to the causing of death two it says house breaking by night so if it is a house we just house breaking if it is not house breaking by night you have got a right no doubt about it but this right doesn't extend to the causing of death so if somebody commits house breaking after sunset and uh, before sunrise then the right of private defense of the body sorry right of private defense of the property extends to the causing of death because right of uh, house breaking by night is an aggravated form of house breaking now thirdly it says mischief by fi fire committed on any building tent or vessel which building tent or vessel is used as a human dwelling or as a place for the custody of property so what is now what is the fourth clause mischief by fire so this right i mean as i mean 425 defines the offense of mischief right from section 426 up to 440 are the sections which deal with what punishment and it says mischief by fire committed on any so there is a mischief of the person wanted to commit the offense of mischief by fire committed on any building tent or vessel which building tent or vessel is used as a human dwelling or as a place for the custody of property so there we say if it is with respect to what a mischief by fire fire committed on any building tent or vessel which building tent or vessel is used as a human dwelling or as a place for custody of property the right of private defense of the property extends to the causing of death and lastly it says theft mischief or house trespass theft mischief or house trespass under such circumstances theft mischief or house trespass under such circumstances as may reasonably cause apprehension that death or grievous hurt will be the consequence if such right of private defense is not exercised so what it says theft mischief or theft mischief or house trespass under such circumstances as may reasonably cause apprehension that grievous that if uh, grievous uh, gr uh, death or grievous hurt will otherwise be the consequence so person is committing the at the time of committing the offense of theft or at the time of committing the offense of mischief or at the time of committing the offense of offense of criminal trespass what he does under such circumstances what are the circumstances the circumstances are such that now it may cause apprehension the circumstances as may cause apprehension that death or grievous hurt will otherwise be the consequence if such right of private defense is not so what it will result into what it will result into either death or grievous hurt if that is the manner in which somebody commits the offense of theft mischief or house trespass under such circumstances in that case what we say the right of private defense of the property extends to the causing of death now this is a time where i want to draw your attention that well this is i mean this uh, as i mean you uh, come you understand this this is i mean we are dealing with indian penal code and once i mean you deal with the provisions of the indian penal code indian penal penal code there can be a law with respect criminal law can be enacted by the central government or it can be enacted by the state government accordingly so now when i mean as per as for the uh, need of an need of an hour this law can be amended either by the central government or by the state government accordingly and hence there are amendments to this as far as indian penal code is amend there can be amendment to the indian penal code as far as the central government is concerned and there can be amendment to the indian penal code as far as the state government is concerned and hence what is i mean this is a time that as i mean sim simultaneously if you start i mean going if you start uh, re reading it you, you when you are in a particular state then what you should do when you are in a partic particular state you must read you must read the amendments which are carried about as far as that particular particular state is concerned because 
criminal law falls under what is known as a concurrent list as far as the constitutional law is concerned and hence this is the time for you to understand that well simultaneously when you are in a particular take, uh, state do take into consideration the amendment which is carried out as far as that particular state is concerned but mind well law when it is a law uh, amendment is carried by central government that becomes law of the territory of india if the amendment is carried carried out by a particular state that becomes law of that particular state only now if it doesn't if it doesn't fall under the section 103 when the right of private defense of the property extends to the causing of death it extends to the causing of harm other than death and that is made very clear as far as section 104 is concerned it says if the offense the committing of which or the attempting to commit which occasions the exercise of the right that you have got a right of private defense be theft mischief or criminal trespass not of any one of the descriptions enumerated in the last preceding section that right does not extend to the voluntary causing of death but does extend subject to the restriction mentioned in section 99 to the voluntary causing to the wrongdoer of any harm other than death so that is as far as the right when it doesn't fall under section 103 but when you have a right your right extends to the causing of harm other than death to be read with what to be read with the restrictions that are laid down as far as section 99 is concerned and section 99 is a common section as i told you with which you are dealt as far as with which is applicable to the right of private defense of the body as well as right of private defense of the property and then what we have learned there we have learned that there is the right of private defense in no case extends to the inflicting of more harm than it is necessary for the purpose of the defense that is one thing so the force that is used by you must be proportionate that is one thing it if it is in excess mind well that will if say you have a right no doubt about it but if you exceed the limit that is guaranteed to you or that is given to you uh, or that is ensured as far as section 99 is concerned that will amount to an offence and hence what the section says the restrictions that are read down the right of private defence in no case extends to the inflicting of more harm than it is necessary for the purpose of defence as far as one exception is concerned one restriction is sorry not exception restriction is concerned with respect to the right of private defence of the body and the property we have already dealt i mean this but i mean just by way of a, a revision so that i mean you will understand it forever two now there is no right of private defense in cases in which there is time to have recourse to the protection of the public authorities so when you have a time somebody i mean somebody threaten you that he is going to come and set fire to your building your time to go to the police somebody came and said tomorrow uh, today evening i will i will uh, take away your standing crop cut, cut away your standing crop there is a time for you to go to the public authority and and what the section says there is no right of private defense in cases in which there is time to have recourse to the protection of the public authorities now along with this along with this there are also i mean there are also two more restrictions with which you are dealt and what are those restrictions there is no right of private defense against an act which does not reasonably cause the apprehension of death or grievous assert if done or attempted to be done by a public servant acting in good faith under color of his office though that act may not be strictly justifiable by law so when the act is done by the public servant which does not reasonably cause apprehension of death or grievous assert then in that case if the act causes reasonable apprehension of death or grievous assert that is one part and that must be an offense as i mean to be read with what to be read with section 97 in that case i mean you have a right otherwise if the act of the public servant does not reasonably cause apprehension of death or grievous assert there is no right of private defense and if you remember i had drawn your attention at the time of having a discussion as far as section 46 sub clause 3 of the criminal procedure code is concerned by way of i mean that i mean if you remember if you remember the two illust two illustrations that i had given at that time when the thief is running away and when the person who has committed the offence of murder is running away maximum force that can be used from the point of view of effective arrest is made very clear we are not dealing with the chapter as far as arrest of persons is concerned that you will learn when you learn it during course of time who has got right to arrest 
what is the procedure of arrest what are the rights of an accused person with which you shall be dealing but in here if you read sub clause 3 it says nothing in this section gives the right to cause the death of a person who is not accused of an offence punishable with death or with imprisonment for life so if the person is punishable if, if he is accused of an offence which is punishable with death or imprisonment for life the right the right from the point of view of effective arrest extends this is in the negative form and what is that it says nothing in this section gives a right so it talks about right nothing in this section gives a right to cause the death of a person who is not accused of an offence so if he is accused of an offence punishable with death or imprisonment for life then right extends to the causing of death murder is an offence which is punishable with death or imprisonment for life theft is not an offence and hence now in case of in case when the thief is running there i mean if the police of i mean that is i mean the illustration that i have told you in case there he thief has a got a right but a person who has committed the offence of murder has got no right because he is the act of the public servant in that case and who is a public servant as i have told you in the past you have to refer to section 21 of the indian penal code where it's a question of enumeration and you go through it that serves the purpose from the point of view of understanding the same with this now this is not only when the act is done by the public servant the section also i mean as it starts with the starts with the, there is no right of private defense if you read now next part of the section next restriction and what is that there is no right of private defense against an act which does not reasonably cause the apprehension of death or grievous assault if done or attempted to be done by direction of the public servant acting in good faith under color of his office though that direction may not be strictly just so when the act is done by the direction of the public servant you are not some the person who is doing an act is not a public servant but he is doing act as per the direction of the public servant in that case also there is no right of private defense as far as the as long as that act does not reasonably cause apprehension of death or grievous hurt and then to be read with what section 97 which says the property whether movable or immovable of himself or any other person against any act falling under the definition of theft robbery mischief or criminal trespass or which is an attempt to commit theft robbery mischief or criminal trespass with this the the, the there are two explanations as far as section 99 so there are four restrictions as far as section 99 is concerned to be read with what two explanations and what it says first explanation says a person is not deprived of the right of private defense against an act done or attempted to be done by a public servant as such unless he knows or has reason to believe that the person doing the act is such a public servant so when he knows or has reason to believe that he is a public servant there is no right of private defense secondly it says a person is not deprived of the right of private defense against an act done or attempted to be done by direction of a public servant unless he knows or has reason to believe that the person doing the act is acting by such a direction or unless such person states the authority under which he acts or if he has authority in writing unless he produces such authority if demanded so there is a right there is a right i mean you are deprived of you are not deprived of the right but you have a right provided i mean if somebody is you know that he is a public servant or you have got reason to believe that he is a public servant or you know that he is doing a act as per the direction of the public servant or you have got reason to believe that he is going to he is doing an act as per the direction of the public servant and that case for example you have got no right of private defense if i mean but you are not if you do not know that if you do not know that in that case for example by all means you have got a right of private defense and then this is there are two explanations as far as the restriction is concerned when a person when person is not deprived of the right is made very clear as far as the act of the public servant is concerned and act which is done by the direction of the public servant is concerned as far as first explanation and second explanation to section 99 of the indian penal code is concerned so this is as i told you what is this right 96 97 98 
when the right commence right of private defense of the property when it commences how long it continues and when it ends for that i mean detail i mean lend the section you have to read section 105 when it extends to the causing of death you have to read uh, section 103 when it extends to the causing of any harm other than death for that you have to read section 100 Hundred and four, and then what are the restrictions or limitations with respect to this right for which you have to read section nine section section ninety nine of the Indian Penal Code right in the beginning as I told you as I mean this is very lengthy no doubt about it there are many sections namely uh, to know right of private defence you have to start right from section ninety six up to one hundred and six but then try to classify the sections accordingly and once you club the sections together that there are some sections dealing with the right of private defense of the body there are some sections dealing with the right of private defense of the property and there are some sections which deal with right of private which are common section so once that is i mean if you start i mean you start having the approach of proceeding in order to understand this chapter i must know what is this right when the right commences how long the right continues when the right ends when it extends to the causing of death and what are the restrictions or limitation with respect to this right that serves the purpose from the point of view of understanding right from section 96 up to 106 of the indian penal code with this now to in the next part we start with one section and that is i mean single section can be taken together which is best on the maxim which is for which i mean we shall be dealing with section 95 which is best on the maxim d minimis non curat lex so next part we shall start discussing section 95 and then continue our discussion during course of time